When I was growing up, my dad used to always say to me, Dickie, very few people will ever be lucky enough to actually be a champion. But everybody can dream like a champion because everyone can choose to be the best that they can be. And one reason that champions like my dad were winners is they were willing to embrace change. So, I now explore with people three ideas for transforming the changes they encounter into opportunities to grow without losing touch with their core selves. The first is search for your natural talents and develop them into skills. The second is travel out into the world and connect with people. And the third one is journey into your core so you understand yourself. I spent years traveling the world as a National Geographic photographer. And everywhere I went, the first thing that people said to me is, that has to be the best job in the world. Well, it was. The assignments were a wonderful way to appreciate the mystery at Niagara Falls, the grandeur of the Tetons, the peace on the eastern shore of Maryland. We could bring the wisdom of a Zulu witch doctor, the insights of a Scottish poet, the stories of an American hermit to the 10 million members of National Geographic, and we shared with them the excitement of carving first tracks into the side of a Canadian mountain, of splashing down a wild river in the Rockies, of leaping from rock to rock on the Appalachian Trail. It was a fantastic way to see the world. And by now, some of you may be wondering, why in the world would anyone ever leave a job like that? Well, just as seasons change, so our lives change. And that's what I'd like to explore with you today, how you can transform the changes you encounter into opportunities for growth without losing touch with your core self. You decide how you're going to respond to change. I mean, you can let it overwhelm you, or you can embrace the change as an opportunity to grow. That's what champions do. That's what leaders do. That's what you can do. We're going to look at three simple ideas for transforming changes into opportunities. The first idea is find your natural talents and develop them into skills. Yes! Gilka's going to give us six cameras, three for Chris, three for me, and 400 rolls of film. And he says, boys, what I want you to do is shoot, shoot, shoot. Well, what an opportunity we created for ourselves, paddling by fabulous monuments like the Parliament Building in Budapest, and floating through the spectacular mountains of Yugoslavia. But like all of us, when we're learning new skills, we muffed some too, and shortly after putting back in the water here in Passau, Austria, ran into a patch of really lousy weather. And it wasn't until the afternoon of the third day that the sun finally broke through those black clouds, beaming a shaft of golden light on the three other canoes and a second shaft of light on the big castle at Dernstein. It was spectacular. I grabbed my camera, click, I get one picture before the sun goes back into those clouds and I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, guys, I just got the cover picture. And I would love to show you that cover picture, but this is what I got. <laughs> the lens cap was on. Ah. But what about you? When was the last time you thought about your ideas? When was the last time you thought about the things that you see through your eyes, that you feel in your heart, that you understand with your mind? Because I'm convinced we have to think about our gifts to discover our gifts, to develop our gifts, and to harness our gifts to productive ideas. As all of you know, sometimes we don't get to pick the next leg of our journey. Like many guys of my generation, I got drafted. And it was there in basic training that I encountered the second idea for transforming changes into growth. Connect with the people around you. And when you think about it, it's through our eyes that we connect with people, isn't it? I mean, what do you do when you meet somebody? You shake their hand and look them in the eye. Well, the question is, what do you see in their eyes? What do they see in your eyes? 
What do you see in their eyes about yourself? I saw a strain in our eyes as the drill instructors whipped us into shape. Intense concentration as we learned to shoot and began to realize that we could get shot. And when we got to Vietnam, I saw anxiety fill our eyes and occasionally terror, ferocity, anger, deep anger, and pain. It has been said many times that the eyes are the windows to our soul. But when we look into somebody's eyes, we not only see their soul, we see into our core. And when I looked into this guy's eyes, I connected with his pain, and I felt my pain. And that's how we grow, isn't it? By connecting with people. I found that after circling the globe for seven years as a staff photographer at National Geographic, I was beginning to feel like I was going to yet another country to shoot essentially the same pictures. Maybe instead of shooting for the geographic, I could shoot for the other pages in magazines. I had heard that advertising photographers were paid more per day than I was earning in a month. So I resigned my treasured position at National Geographic and set out for New York and the promised land of advertising. With a series of national ads, other opportunities opened up and assignments began pouring in to photograph sailors on leave in Hong Kong, boaters in Bora Bora, bushmen in the outback of Australia, hikers at the foot of the Jungfrau in Switzerland. I mean, it was exciting flying all over the world, working with a great team in these spectacular places. As a combat photographer and as a National Geographic photographer, I had been serving as a messenger, communicating understanding about the world through the lens of a camera. That was important to me. That was a core value. In photographing the advertising campaigns, I was not communicating understanding. I was creating fantasies. And there's nothing wrong with that. It just wasn't right for me. I was not using my core talents to support my core values. I was beginning to feel boxed in. I realized that it's not enough to travel out into the world. You also have to journey into your core self. And that is the third idea for transforming change into growth. You have to understand yourself. Well, one year, I traveled around the country working on a book called Golfers, interviewing and photographing people who shared a passion for the game. And my friend, the writer, Paul Anderson, described how a round of golf played in a pasture above Carbondale helped him connect to his core self. He said, Dick, there's a value in golf that's greater than the game. It's the idea of possibility in life. I mean, isn't that what we're all striving for? Possibility in life? As we have seen, change is inevitable, but destiny is not fixed. As William Jennings Bryan so famously said, Destiny is not a matter of chance. It's a matter of choice. And I hope that you choose to seek possibilities in your life by transforming the changes you encounter into opportunities for growth. Because that's what champions do. That's what leaders do. That's what we can all do. Thank you very much.